I think there were mainly three highlights. Uh, the first highlight was on an ultra high density mapping system used to uh, be able to map um, atrial tachycardias with low voltages in the atria. That was a very interesting study because it showed us that you were able to, with this system, to detect very small gaps and isthmus lines that were not discernible with other kinds of systems. So that will certainly facilitate for, for the physicians to detect complex arrhythmias and it made the procedures faster. Uh, Gerard Hindix was the person reporting from that um, registry of 500 patients. The other highlight, I think, was the Gloria AF2 trial reported by Greg Lipp from Birmingham. It was a registry on patients with high uh, Chazvas score 3 around uh, uh, for AF ablation with risk factors for stroke. These patients were on dabigatron and they were followed for two years. And as comparison to the RELY trial, it was shown that all event rates were significantly lower than in the RELY trial. So you had bleeding rates lower than 1%, stroke rates much lower than in the RELY trial, and also cardiovascular death was much lower. So that is um, giving us information that actually Dabegatron or NOAC functions in very well in clinical practice. The compliance rate was also very high, 77% after two years of follow-up. Now the third trial was a large German registry, the Helios registry, presented by Dr. Überham from Leipzig. They have registered over 21,000 patients undergoing AF ablation and they analyzed the, um, the tamponide complication. They were able to demonstrate that tamponide were la much lower frequency if the cryo balloon was used. I think the level was around 0.2% risk of tamponide as compared to RF ablation where the tamponade risk was 1 to 4 5%. So that was a, a great message because in the higher risk patients for tamponade like females, patients with diabetes, patients with renal failure, maybe the cryo balloons should be used in these more higher risk patients. It was also shown that 12% of the tamponades actually required surgical intervention, which tells us that if you perform AF ablation procedures, you should have surgical backup. So I think these are, are the main messages from these trials.